Well, that there is a water pump from a, what's this cat? Cat, cat C7. A Cat C7. 2004, 7.2 liter. And we let, how far did we get? 120 miles? Yeah. <laughs> the difference, after getting the differential fixed, we went from Carson City down to, what's this place called? Lone something? Lone Pine. Lone Pine. California. California, just outside of um, Death Valley. Death Death Valley. So anyways, so we've got just about two miles from the campground, the engine overheated, and we, with our troubleshooting, we found out this is the culprit. The water pump has locked up tight as a drum. We'll, we'll not belt turn road. it off. Oh yeah, it snapped the belt. So, well, it took four hours to go two miles because we could only go about a quarter of a mile and then the engine went overheat. We'd have to stop, let it rest. Go to another quarter of a mile. And just to give you an idea of what we've been dealing with today, we finally got it out. But way back in that hole, let me get my dirty finger in there. Let me see, yeah, you can see right there. That's where the water pump sat. And so we had a good time taking off uh, compressors and belts and pulleys and, and air filter assemblies and working from under, underneath and above. So we finally got that off. And the new, new part should be here tomorrow. It will continue on with this project and get this motorhome back on the road like it's supposed to be. So just another part of a, a fun part of RV living. Day two. Here's the old pump that we fought last night in the dark. Got it off. You can see it's locked up tight on the drum. When that happens, your engines over tend to overheat. And here's the brand new pump. Turns nice and smooth. We just gotta transfer a bunch of pieces, parts over. Some fittings, some adapter plates for the compressor. Back, we'll be back on the road soon. Water pump update. Here we go, got all the new parts changed over. Isn't that just a work of art? Beautiful. That one is now no good. Toss it. We're actually shipping it back. We're going to fix to put it up in this hole here. Yay, lots of fun. Here all right, this might be helpful for, some, for somebody. This We're working on a C7 cat. And these are the four bolts that holds the water pump on. I, I went ahead and put them in place just so I know they screw all the way in, that they're not bottoming out, so I know I don't get a fake torque. But, you know, also to point out to people, I mean, I've never done this type of, type of work before on a big diesel, but just standard hand tools, we've been able to get the water pump off and get stuff out of the way. Uh, while we've been here inside here, we're also changing out the bearings on the idlers, because they was kind of noisy, so we have, we've replaced those. And we're going to change out the thermostat too. It's on up above. We've got to get, you can see the hole up through the floor of the RV in the bedroom. So you get down in here to access it. That's one thing about RVs, everything's really tight, not much clearance to get a hold of stuff. But if you're going to break down, this is the place to break down. Let me show you the, show you the view out here. We're in Pine, Pine, Texas place called Lone Pine. That's it. Lone Pine, California. There's the beautiful mountains all around us. See the snow on top. And actually just right down the road, about a half mile is Mount Whitney. It's a big climbing destination for people. About 14,000 feet. Beautiful weather, so if you're gonna break down, this is the place to do it, I guess. And if you ever wanted to know where your thermostats are on a C7, they're right on top. See, take these, this little adapter off. And it's got two, two thermostats in there. There they are, so we're going to change those out while we're at it. You see we're inside the motor home here. Here's the carpet. The little access door comes out. We even get to this. And then the water pump uh, sits right down in that hole there. So that's what we're doing right now. We've got a lot of cleanup to do. We've got to get the surface good and clean to get ready for the new Well, you can see the shiny new water pump is installed. we still got a lot of plumbing to hook up enough thermostats to put in. So we're going to talk about, see that little, that pretty blue water uh, hose there? Uh, you want to be sure to replace that because that's a burger to ever replace if it ever fails on you. Everything's a tight spot. The other things we did, we, we changed out the idler pulley bearings. There's a couple of those we spun. Now this one was still good. It was, it was nice and quiet. But we had two other ones. We spun them and they was real noisy. So we just got sockets and drove out, and the hammer drove out the old bearings, went down to Napa, they had them in stock, 
and we use the vise to press in new bearings. So we got that took care of. But I was gonna go out and talk about weird failure that how this happened. We're heading to the campground. We got like two miles from the campground. His check engine light came on. Uh, we're overheated, and then uh, of course he saw his temperature at 225, so he quickly pulled off the road. When he pulled off uh, the road, water was coming out of this tank. This is a brand new one, actually, but the old tank. It had split. Water was spewing out, and the belt was squealing. So we thought, okay, well, well that's the problem. We thought that was the only thing that was wrong at, at the moment because the water was spewing out and got on the belt. The belt was squeaking, making the fan not turn fast enough, causing the engine to overheat. So we let it sit and cool. We added water uh, back to it and started up. So well, we only got two more miles. Let's just go on into the campground. We went about a quarter mile, it overheated again. Of course, the whole time we noticed the belt was still squeaking. It, it wouldn't get dried off and stop squeaking. Uh, that's when I crawled underneath there and I found the uh, pulley was not turning on the water pump and actually so this up there's two belts on this thing you got this big long serpentine belt that's that drives the uh, the fan pulley off the crankshaft but you got this little short belt right here it's a little short belt actually drives the water pump it hooks to the water pump and it goes around the whole body balancer and so this pulley was locked up and that's what was squalling making all the racket and before we got to the campground, it actually burned itself in two and snapped off. Of course, when it did, it got wrapped around some of the pulleys. It damaged the serpentine belt. You can see how it's, how it's all chewed up. And bits and pieces of belt also got up into the grooves of the serpentine pulleys. So that's something you want to clean out. You want to make sure you get in there and clean out those pulleys real well. Because little bits of rubber can get in there and that may cause a new belt to fail also. You don't want that. Okay, and here's a view from underneath. This is the crossover tube, which I'm about to hook back up to the bottom of the water pump, and right here it is. Here's the intake to the water pump. Nice, brand new, shiny parts. And Ken's up top. You see his little fat little fingers? I watch it. <laughs> He's up there putting a the thermostat in. So. We're slowly making progress. We still got daylight, so we're doing good. Okay, here's your good tip. It's the next day we're finishing up. Uh, going to get it, get it running today, I think. This is the idler pulley. It keeps the belt tight on the water pump. And the bearings were about to go bad. So instead of buying, spending 50 bucks from Cat, which probably cost, we just bought the bearings at Napa. Going to press those in, and we'll be good to go. Half price. Well, let's see. Yeah, we put this in. This is a poor man's press. Just put it in a vise. We'll rotate it. Press the bearing right into place. It'll be good to go. Easy look there. New bearing installed. Turns just like a brand new one. So we'll head back to the RV and try it. Alright, day two, way. we're back under the RV. And actually I'm I'm on the bottom side. Ken's up there. Hey there. Hello, he's up the top putting in the thermostats. And actually this thing has two. And we just talked about, you know, we've done this whole project so far just with basic hand tools, sockets and stuff that we keep with us. The only thing we had to buy was a, a special torque socket to break this loose. Because as we got it apart, this bearing was really noisy and now it's really quiet. We took it apart, pressed in new bearings. Same with this, put new bearings in it. So now my job is to get these belts on there and hook up a few more water lines and put in antifreeze and hopefully we'll be ready for a test. Check out this massive belt temp tensioner. See how wide that spring is? That's the spring that's coiled up inside of there. There's the idler pulley. So that keeps that big old fan belt in there tight. Of course, once I get this in there up in that hole, then you, you stick a ratchet in that square hole and, and, and pull it down to fight the big spring, get the belt looped around there and get it on. And That's a lot bigger stuff than I'm used to, dealing with cars, lawnmowers, and other things. So, pretty good stuff. I guess that's why they well, we're getting really close almost ready for startup just to give you an idea where that crazy water pump was located because see we're on the outside of the rv poking through our heads through this little hole and you go back in here and you can see the wrench i got the wrench sitting on the nut on the back side of the water pump so it's way back in that little hole we have to remove a whole lot of junk to get into there so we finally got it all back together we're going to add water we're gonna start it up, let everything warm up, look for leaks and all that good stuff, and see if see if we performed a good job. Alright, just to show you how we have to improvise because right here 
in a campground trying to fix an RV. We didn't have anything really good to catch the antifreeze and keep it clean. So we just got one of these big heavy duty garbage bags and caught the antifreeze in that. And now Ken's putting it in a gallon jug and we will in turn, I'll show you what, what, how fun this is, trying to get it back up in this little cubby hole to fill this reservoir up. So it's gonna take a few minutes and then we'll be, we'll be ready for a test. Okay, start. rock and roll. Ready for startup. Oh, that's the sound of music. Sound of music. Sounds good. Don't see no water dripping nowhere. That's a good sign. So we'll let it warm up. Check for antifreeze and see if it's gonna work. Alright, there we go. 188, it just went to 190, which that's what it should be. Looking good. A lot better than 225. We don't want to see that number no more. Awesome, awesome. Well, I do believe we can call this job a success. We ran the engine through three different cycles, warmed it all the way up, let it cool off, ran it again. We've changed the oil. The antifreeze levels stay where it's supposed to be. We've looked and looked and checked everything over. There are no drips anywhere. Everything is dry. Everything sounds good. So, glad this two-day project is over. And now we can get on going down the road maybe exploring death valley doing something else but it was a pretty satisfying job seeing either one of us had really worked on a diesel engine before and it all came together working with limited tools out in the middle of a campground so it can be done you don't have to be in a repair shop to replace a water pump on a cat c7 engine so we can do it anybody can do it have a great day